How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Tacoma Beast channel. Today we're going to be showing you how to upgrade your stock 7 inch infotainment system to the all new Stinger Heighten infotainment system. This kit is also available for second gen Tacomas. We did not forget you second gen owners. This is a massive overhaul to the stock unit. Let's get right into it. Before we move to the install, I do wanna go over some of the key features and my initial thoughts on this unit. The first thing that I notice is the 10 inch massive screen that comes with this unit. That's a 45% upgrade compared to the stock unit and not to mention the fitment. They did such a good job at scanning our truck and making sure that all the parts and pieces fit perfectly. It almost feels like this came from the factory. Now this system does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is one of the biggest things that I love about it. I do have an iPhone, so let's check it out. I love the fact that I can have my Waze or Google Maps. My absolute favorite here is Gaia. I do come from having a second gen. I did upgrade later to a 2018 third gen Toyota Tacoma and I did not have Apple CarPlay. For some of you that do have the 2020 Tacomas might have Apple CarPlay, but the majority of us don't and this right here fellas is awesome being able to have your spotify your whatsapp you can even do zoom i didn't even know that another really cool app that's included in this infotainment system is the option to have sirius xm for those of you that already have accounts or would like to have one i've tried it it's really awesome and then it does come with a 4 by 50 watt peak built-in amplifier Know that this system can accommodate everything from your stock audio to the premium Toyota JBL audio system or any aftermarket system that you might have on your Toyota Tacoma. For all you audio files out there, you're gonna love this. Check this out. So here we have all the basic settings that we have on our Toyota Tacoma. But if we move to this setting right here, you have 15 bands of equalization for full customization, depending on what music you're listening to. You also have the option to select from six presets you have the option for crossover, time correction, and then factory EQ. These are already presets that are built in that you guys can check out. One thing that I really enjoy about this system is being able to keep the steering wheel controls. So as you guys can see here, we can go up in volume and it controls it right there. We can also go up in volume here if we wanted to, and then we can change channels. I can also hang up and pick up if I needed to or activate Siri from here. Now this system will give you the option to have iGo navigation. They do have a built-in SD card slot reader for that in case you guys are interested. This next feature is one of my favorite. If we go into the cameras app here, it will automatically show us our rear view camera. Uh, we do not have to engage in reverse in order to see it. And here we have the option to mount four cameras in total. So as you guys can see, we can add a camera to the front. Right now I don't have anything there, so it won't show anything. We have the rear and then you can actually mount one to your left mirror or your right mirror. I'm actually thinking of adding these to the bottom of my truck, showing my rear differential. So when I'm wheeling and off-roading, I can actually see if my differential will be safe or what's in front of me. So I will eventually not need a spotter. How awesome is that? One of the last features that I wanna mention is the optional external microphone that is included with this kit. You can choose to mount it on top of your A-pillar or not use it at all and use the internal microphone that is inside the dash. For those of you that are interested in this kit, we do have it in stock, ready to ship at TacomaBees.com. We'll make sure to include a link in the description down below. Before we move on, I do wanna let you know I would rate this two out of a five in terms of install difficulty. As long as you follow along and do everything I'm about to show you, you should not have any problem. As as far as install time, you should not take more than 45 minutes to an hour to install this kit. Now let's go ahead and check out what tools you're going to need. The materials you're going to need are some zip ties, a cable rod, a 10 millimeter socket, wrench and extension, a Phillips screwdriver, plastic pry tool and a soft piece of fabric. You might also want a power drill to make it easier. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the box. You should have received two packages, one of them holding the Stinger Height 10 inch infotainment system. And then the other one is the installation kit 
This will hold everything you need, cables, plastic parts that will make this dash sit super flush inside the cab. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what comes inside the box. Inside the installation kit, you will be receiving your factory match radio mounting panel for the Hyten. You will see the RP4.2, which is the radio replacement interface, then a complete plug and play installation harness, and then all the adapters for your AM, FM, GPS, USB, and Sirius XM that will be required. You will also have two panels here that will be attached to your Hyten. Depending on the current infotainment system that you have on your Tacoma, we will be explaining which one you will need down the line. Now let's take a look at what comes inside the second box. Inside your Hyten box, you will be receiving your 10-inch modular multimedia display, your ra radio module, plastic dash mounting bracket, rubber boot, and all the cables and wire harnesses needed to install this kit. Now do take note, there are some things here that you will not be using. We will mostly be using everything that arrived in your installation kit. As long as you guys follow along, you should not have any problems. You can also always refer back to the installation guide that comes inside the box. Before we move on, I do wanna let you know we'll be working on Project Great White. This is our 10 year anniversary overland build, which will take 10 months to complete. The series will consist of reviews and installation videos of all the products that will be installed on this truck until it turns into the ultimate overland rig. At the end of the 10 months, one lucky winner will win this truck. Now let's get back to the install. All right, now it's time for us to start the installation. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to remove this center trim piece. And you're gonna do that by simply prying it away from the dash, just like that. Using a 10 millimeter socket and our extension, we're gonna remove the four bolts that are attaching the radio to the dash. Now we're going to remove the radio remove all the factory wires that are connected to the radio. If you choose to use the optional microphone, you're going to clip it on the A pillar at the top, making sure that the cable goes behind the clip. And then you can choose to insert the cable with your fingers or using your pry tool. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers here. Push down the cable through the weather strip all the way down. So you guys can see, it's nicely hidden. Using a plastic pry tool, we're going to pry up on the speaker cover. And then you're gonna work around it to remove it completely. Using a cable wire rod, we're going to send the mic cable all the way to the dash now that we've removed the speaker cover. Now it's time for us to install the speaker cover. The key here is gonna be to make sure that these two tabs fall in place. If they don't, you're gonna have a hard time. Now we're going to place our multimedia display inside the mounting panel. Take a look at how nice this fits in here. It sits so flush. I'm gonna flip it around, make sure that you don't position this in a place where you can scratch the display. And then using the four supplied screws, we're gonna attach these two pieces together. The kit will include two mounting plates. You need to determine which one's going to fit your system, as you guys can see. This one falls right through. This is the plate that we're gonna be using. It's labeled up. This is the top part of the trim piece. So we're gonna flip that around and then the arrow will be facing up. And then we're going to grab our screen. And these two clips are going to clip into these two holes. Make sure those align. Make sure that clips in place. And as you guys can see, this mounts perfectly on our center trim piece. Now, 
we just need to use the six supplied screws to screw it into place. If you have power tools, make sure not to go too hard. You will strip the threads. All right, now we're gonna install the side brackets on the Hyten Brain. You're gonna wanna make sure that these tabs right here are facing the back of the brain. First, we're gonna install one side by using the four supplied screws here. Now we're gonna do the other side. Just like that, this is how it should look. Make sure the side bracket is sitting flush with the brain. Now we're going to secure the radio replacement interface to the computer and the side brackets. You're gonna wanna make sure that the connectors are facing the back of the computer along with all the other connectors. And then you're gonna get the supplied zip ties and you're gonna use those to secure them to the side brackets. Here you're gonna wanna make sure these are nice and tight so that this does not rattle around once you put it inside the dash. Should look something like this. Now we're going to cut the excess off. Before we install the power harness, you are going to want to toggle switch number three to the on position on your radio replacement interface. The kit will include two wire harnesses that are meant to fit a variety of different Tacomas. Now it's time for you to identify which one fits yours. So here we can clearly see that this connector here fits my Tacoma and then this black one will go here and then the white one. So clearly this one is for me. I'm gonna set this one to the side. After you have identified which harness fits your vehicle, we're going to connect the radio replacement harness. On the other side, we're gonna be connecting our power harnesses and communication harnesses. These are all unique, so there's no way you can go wrong. And then on the radio replacement interface, you're gonna have two connectors. If your truck has an amplifier, then you will go on the amplifier output. If it does not have an amplifier, you will go on the non-amplified. The black connector on your harness will be the power source for the computer. Make sure it clicks. This is our video input harness, which will also be connected to the back of the computer. Now we're going to connect the reverse camera input. There's a cable named reverse camera in and one named OEM camera. We're gonna be connecting these two together. This small connector is a steering wheel control adapter, which is gonna go in the back of the computer as well. Now you're going to grab your power antenna adapter and plug it into the antenna receiver. Blue wire will get connected to the bullet receiver labeled power antenna. Connect the pink wires labeled speed send. One is located on the main harness and the other one is located on the additional camera input harness. Then you'll grab the white connector on your camera input harness and connect it to the back of the computer. Depending on the year of your truck, you're going to use one of these two USB adapters. I've gone ahead and confirmed that this USB adapter is the one that fits my factory harness. Referencing the front logos on the computer, we're going to use our USB adapter and use the top port. If you installed your microphone, then make sure to install your microphone input harness. Now we're going to connect the display connector and power harness and make sure to route them towards the front of the computer. Make sure to connect the small video adapter to the main harness. Since our Toyota Tacoma is a 2001, it does not need the 3.5 audio aux cable connected. 
if you did use the other wire harness that is applicable to earlier models, then in this situation, you would need to connect the 3.5 audio aux connectors like this. In our situation, we don't need to do this. Now it's time to go inside the truck. We're in the home stretch here. Right now we're gonna grab our three millimeter uh, mic connector that we originally uh, sent through the A-pillar. And now we're gonna be connecting that to the mic adapter that we originally connected to our computer. Now we're going to use the black FACRA connector supplied in your kit to the OEM harness. This will take advantage of the satellite radio. Plug in the white adapter to take advantage of the factory GPS antenna. This will save us some time instead of having to use the GPS antenna that's supplied with this kit. The blue end you'll connect to the computer. Then you're going to grab your antenna adapter, which is the blue and black cable. You're gonna connect that to your factory harness. Use the USB adapter and connect that to the factory wire harness. This will allow you to use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay by using the factory USB port. Make sure to connect all of your factory connectors to your main harness. Make sure none of them are left behind. We're done with all the connections. Now we're gonna go ahead and organize all these cables with some zip ties and get everything organized. Quick tip, before you do all the cable management and zip tie everything together, you are going to want to make sure that your display is working properly. You are gonna wanna put your truck in reverse and check that your rear view camera is working. Uh, you, it's gonna suck if you install everything back in and then that does not work. You're gonna have to put everything apart and see if there's one connector that wasn't connected properly. So make sure you do that. Once the computer has been installed and you've hit all the cables behind the dash, now it's time for us to use the four bolts that we had originally removed, but make sure that these two cables are sticking out. These will be the two that will be connected to your display. Now we're going to connect our video and power connectors to the display. Now it's time for us to put the center trim piece back on the truck. You're gonna wanna make sure that all the tabs are aligning with the holes and that you're not pinching these cables. You're going to be applying a little bit of pressure on this side and then a little bit on the other, making sure that everything is sitting nice and flush. In order to test the unit and make sure everything is working properly, we're gonna turn on the truck. The unit's going on. The first thing we're gonna test for is to make sure that the steering wheel is working properly with the unit. So as you can see, you can put the volume up and down from the unit itself or from the steering wheel as well. So once we've confirmed that everything is working nicely with the steering wheel, we're gonna put the truck in reverse and make sure that the camera does turn on and it does. All right, fellas, and just like that, your Stinger Heighten radio replacement kit is installed. This should not take you more than 45 minutes to an hour to get done. As long as you follow along, you should not have any problems and I'm actually in love with it. I love being able to have the Apple CarPlay, having my maps, having my music, and this right here, having access to my cameras. Right now I only have one, I have the option to add three more, and I wanna know what are your thoughts on the overall process of installing this kit? Make sure to comment down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.